This video is about extracting data from rasters uh, at associated points in vector data using R. One of the common tasks that we want to perform in geospatial analysis is extracting data from rasters for use in our analyses. We might want information on things like elevation or precipitation from a raster layer uh, combined with information on sampling or observation points. We'll start with the code we used last time to load in our digital terrain model and our plot locations. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and run that all at once. And if you need a minute to get that set up, uh, pause and take care of that. And we need the raster data and the vector data to have the same coordinate reference system like we learned about last time. So remember, we can do this using the strtransform function. So we'll go ahead and say plots underscore harv utm is assigned the output from st underscore transform. And then remember that takes the spatial object we want to transform, in this case plots underscore harv, and the coordinate reference system that we want to transform it into. And so we will look up the coordinate reference system using st underscore crs uh, for our raster object, dtm harv. To then get the raster values at the point locations that uh, we have for our plots, we use the aggregate function. And aggregate takes three main arguments. The first is the raster object that we want to extract the information from. The second is the vector object indicating where we want to get the information from on that raster. And then the third argument is the function that we use for combining the values from multiple pixels if there are multiple pixels associated with each location in the vector data. So in our case, to extract the elevations at each location, uh, at each one of our plots, it would look something like this. We'll call this data plot elevations and assign it the output from the aggregate function. And so we start with the raster and that's DTM harv. Then we want the vector data where we want to extract the raster information. So that's plots harv UTM. These need to be in the same projection. And then the third argument, we'll just use the mean here though it doesn't really matter. So we'll say, give me the average elevation uh, for the pixels associated with each plot. And then we need one more argument, which is as underscore points is equal to false. And this last argument has to do with the details of how R treats the raster data and because we are working with points in this case, it prevents it from approximating the raster data as points, which would actually lead us to getting null values back because it's very rare that two points directly coincide. So this means it will actually treat the raster like a pixel, like a box. And so we can run this uh, and it'll take just a second to do that extraction. Uh, and now if we look at the output for plot elevations, uh, we'll see that it's a list of elevations and there are actually seven of them because there are seven points. We can't see the last one here. And we can access those elevations directly uh, using the dollar sign. And so remember that the dollar sign will 
take a piece of something out. We've used it to get a column out of a data frame as a vector. It will work in a similar way here. And so we can say, give me from the plot elevations object, dollar sign, this piece. And we can see the name of that piece here. It's actually named after the file that the raster was generated from. And so I'm going to start typing harv and then hit tab here because I don't remember it. And so it's harv underscore dtm crop dot tiff. And if we run that line, we'll see that we get out the seven elevations, one matched to each row in the plots harv utm spatial data frame. And these elevations occur in the same order, left to right, as the values in this data frame are top to bottom. And so we can add it to our existing spatial data frame so that we then have them to work with. And we can do this in several different ways. One way is to use the mutate function that we've learned in dplyr. I'm going to go ahead and load the dplyr package up here so that we can work with it. And then we could say mutate. We want to add a column to this data frame. So plots harv utm is the data frame that we want to work with. We'll call the new column elevations. So we give it the name of the new column is equal to. And then our information is in this uh, object inside plot elevations. So we can say plot elevations dollar sign harv underscore dtm crop dot tiff. And if we do this, it will return a new data frame uh, with our new column that we could store either into something new or use to overwrite the plot elevations table. Another alternative would be to uh, add it directly to the existing table. And we could do that by assigning it to a new column in our existing data frame. And the way that we do that is we would say plots harv utm, so it's the table we want to add something to, dollar sign elevations, and that column doesn't exist yet, and so this will create it and add something to it, and then assign it the value of plot elevations dollar sign harv underscore dtm crop dot tiff. And so now, if I click on the right thing, uh, we could go back and we can see that we've changed uh, the original data frame to add this new elevations value that we could now work with to say, do an analysis of differences in elevation between different plot types or whatever else we would want to do with that data. So that's the basic idea behind how we extract information uh, at a set of vector points using R. Uh, we read the data in in the usual way, transform it to make sure that the raster and the vector data are in the same CRS. And then we use the aggregate function, which takes the raster data that we want to extract from, the vector data where we want to extract raster values, uh, and the function that we use for combining multiple values uh, into a single output. And then if we're working with point data, uh, we also want to add as underscore points equals false to make sure that we treat the rasters as a square. Once we have that information, we can then treat it like a new column in the vector data frame that we started with and add it as a new column there for further work.